and certain men. He has been on that presbytery for at least 10 years. Dr. Johnson has been in ministry for 50 years. He has brothers in ministry, his father, his grandfather, his sons are in ministry. His whole family is a family of ministers. And he, when the pastoral team we have now with three pastors, when we took over before years this summer, he called me up quickly. And he's always stayed in contact with me and told me that he loves us and he's praying for us and he wants to be available for us for anything. And he called me up recently and he said, I really feel I have a word that I want to come share with the church. I want to come be with you, and I want to love on you. And that's what he's been doing for three days. He's been loving on us. He's been with us individually if we needed him. He has, uh, he's been up here doing some great messages. If you've not heard the messages, don't forget they're on Facebook. We also have a YouTube channel. I'll have to check and see if the videos are on the YouTube channel. But you can subscribe to YouTube, and it'll bring up that feed, okay? If you have not heard these messages, I think it's very key to go listen to them. It's been centered around grace. All kinds of aspects of grace. You need to get that because today he's going to do some finalization, right? He's going to do that this morning. And, and I want you to go listen to those videos so it'll tie together. I also wanted to say I forgot Dr. Um, Dwayne, or Pastor Richie, is going to be going to where? New Hope Baptist Church this afternoon at 3 o'clock. And if you want to go over there and listen, they're going to be having... A meeting and he was invited to come and we need to support him and support them and go to that if we have time but for uh, I just want to throw that in because I completely missed it in my notes I'm glad he's sitting right in front of me he's, he's like my wife he knows that he's she has to get in front of me and she says will you look at me I'm talking to you and I'm like okay I got you our worship team will be there great hey thanks to the worship team today amen you know the thing about being a church, a volunteer organization who loves God and loves people is it's, I, I can't be critical of anybody. If, if, with my voice, who am I? If, you ask, if I was to sing, you would understand where I come from. I'm so thankful for our worship team and what they do, that they come up and they're committed to trying to bring us closer to the Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for doing it week in and week out. And thank you for the other people in this church who volunteer week in and week out. And... Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for coming and sharing with us. Will you come up and share with us some more? Praise the Lord, man. That picture is something else, isn't it? Wow. Amen. I turned 73 this month. And, uh, talk about the goodness of the Lord. You know, live this long is a, is a real blessing. My uh, father had a third day, third grade education. I was telling Pastor about this today. He had a third grade education, but he insisted that he was going to read, and he prayed and asked God to teach him how to read, and he became a theologian. He, he didn't just read the Bible. He read every book to, that he could. So I'm without excuse, amen? And uh, so let's get in the Word this morning. I want to talk from the subject of change. Change. And uh, so as we go, would you raise your Bibles and let's make a confession together. Say this with me. I'm a believer and not a doubter. Jesus, you're my Lord. I believe the Word of God. I believe what it says to me. I accept what it has to offer. In the name of Jesus. I want to thank the pastor and the, the pastors and the uh, congregation for my time with you. I've, I've had a, an excellent time. I preached in a place one time and went home and <clears throat> I told my mother, I said, Mom, I really enjoyed myself. I just had a great time. I, I really enjoyed myself. And I kept saying, I really enjoyed myself. So she said, son, sounds like you enjoyed you, but did the people get anything out of it? So I, I really have had a great time with you. It's been wonderful and awesome, and I'm excited to be here. There's a statement I heard, and I copied it down to say first. Constant change is here to stay. Constant change is here to stay. That's something that we have to become accustomed to. We're going to 
be involved in change. It's going to happen. Things are going to move from one place to another. Uh, we, we have different things that we enjoy or like that will pass on going other places. And so we want to make sure that we can uh, adjust ourselves and know and understand that all, all change isn't bad. All change is not negative. Uh, sometimes it's essential. Amen. Uh, God talks constantly about our changing, uh, how we're to, to move and be, be ready for the next thing that he wants to do in our lives. So we want to make sure that we're prepared in that. Malachi chapter 3. Uh, Malachi chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 6 there. And from the King James, it says, I am the Lord. I keep changing so that things can be different and things can go around. Is that what it says? Oh, I was just reading it like we believe it. God doesn't change. God doesn't change. God doesn't change. Nor does God advocate what he has not approved. And the key is, God says, I am the Lord, I change not. And because I don't change, you all aren't consumed. And so we, 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 we kind, of, kind, of, kind of cradle everything in his consistency. And the pastor was real funny when I was studying. I, I, I don't generally do this, but I ran across uh, the word consistent, and then... I began to study, but then I heard the Holy Spirit says that that's what you're to be, talking to me, you're to be consistently consistent. You're to be consistently consistent. And then being consistently consistent causes you to be adjustable when change begins. At least you're in place. Y'all got it? You're in place. So say it with me. Consistently consistent. Say that. And so then we're ready for change. We're ready for change. What, whatever it is, whatever happens, we're, we're, we're on mark. We're on mark. We can be able to move, to move with it and not get uh, frustrated or left behind. I just understand that it, it's, it's time to do some things differently. And Rick Warren, Rick Warren in his pur Purpose Driven book says it this way. He says that... Um, he said, but we do not have, wait a minute, we are products of our past. We're products of our past, but we do not have to be prisoners of it. We're products of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of our past. So, in, in terms of growing with God, there's a lot of pain, a lot of disappointment, a lot of other things that have happened to us that we have to leave behind or bringing it along will it'll kind of hinder us flowing into the newness that God wants us to experience. So uh, spend a lot of time on getting healed from past pain, getting, getting over hurt, Getting, getting over situations that, that has caused grief in your life. And, and, and uh, believe God that he is the healer uh, and, and, and the reconciler and, and, and move on. <clears throat> Did I give you Numbers 23.19 yet? Numbers 23.19. And this is from another translation. I didn't write the translation down, I'm sorry, but it says, the Lord is not human that he should lie. King James says, the Lord is not man that he should lie. I like this version. He's not human that he should lie. Not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Or does he promise and not fulfill? You know, God says, I am that I am. I'm, I'm not unfair, and I'm, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a just God, and I look at every situation and judge accordingly. 
He says, but the one thing I don't do is change. I, I don't change. And so uh, as we enjoin ourselves to him, our changing can be on a positive note, not everything that happens to cause change be negative in our lives. We, we, we just expect that what God is going to do in us, he's going to do it for our good and his glory. And, and that's, I believe that is what we're looking forward to as we move in the things of God. I'll give you some words that could also go with change, some terms that also go with change. Alteration. Alteration. I like this one because it, it, it implies that I'm going to be keeping moving while I'm changing. Exchange. 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 That's what we've done this week uh, uh, when, when I was with the pastors. We've exchanged. We've exchanged in conversation. We've exchanged in uh, just, you know, collaborating. We've, we've exchanged. Every human being needs an interaction that's positive enough to keep them growing. If you disconnect for any time, it's almost like you have to retrain yourself to come back into a relationship. And so it's key, key for us that we touch and be touched. Incidentally, are you aware that babies that do not have enough touching suffer from that? Ba babies have to be, they have to be touched, not handled, but touched. They, there's something about the, the mom and the Father's, you know, uh, hands on them, you know, and, and it's, it's just like that. It's just like in our lives, God knows that we need to be touched. We're, we're his children, <laughs> and he knows that we need his touch. So oftentimes he will, he will just come and through his spirit just cradle us and, and just assure us and, and uh, get us into that place where we, we feel we feel loved. Amen? And uh, so that was, that was a good thing. Let's look at the, the last term of this, uh, of this the, the lessons or the terms I was going to give you. The last one was um, transformation. Transformation. Uh, that, let me, let me say positive transformation where we're, where we're changed. Now, Scripture says this, that we're going to be changed. All, all of us eternally will be changed. We'll be changed from mortal to immortality. We'll, we'll be changed from mortals to immortality. And, and, and that, that change is going to be the final. That, that's going to be, we will be with him, and so we will be like him. We will be as he is. But the change that we have to do now, let's, let's talk about some of the toughest changes we have to make. Our mind, our mind, we have to change our mind. There are things we believe that are just not accurate. <laughs> there, there are things that we let roll around here that's just not necessary. And so change in a lot of ways means let's get, let's get our minds clear. Let's get our mind so that the mind doesn't fight us. We're not in a battle with our mind. And, and, and that we can be clear in, in what it is that we have to do, what to believe, you know, all the other kinds of things that, that happen to us. And, 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 and so it's, it's important that you go through this. Did I teach on the filter, the conceptual filter? I don't have time to teach on that right now, but the conceptual filter is ideas, concepts that we've allowed to stay up in, in, this, in the regions of our, of our, our mind. And really, they, they, uncorrected, they will sabotage a lot of what we have to do in life. Uh, for instance, poor self-concepts. So many people battle with not liking who they are. You know, but it's like you're stuck in, 
you're stuck in this body to be that, but you don't want to be that. You don't like being that. And so it's a, it's a real key for us to know how to get to the point that God has availability to us. He has access to us so that one that doesn't lie, listen to me, the one that doesn't lie can come to you and teach you not to beat up on yourself, not to think. The scripture says we should not think more of ourselves than we ought. The other part of that is you should not think less of yourself than you should. I'm an amen preacher, so excuse me. Amen, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. So it, it's, it's a real key for us to be mentally healthy as well as physically healthy. We, and, and, to, and, and, and to work on that with everything that we have and everything that we have. Let's, let's look at the unchanging nature of God, some of the verses of scriptures that continue to tell us that. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Get, get that, get an image of that. Get an image of God sitting by you saying, I got you. Everything is going to be okay. I'm the unchanging factor in your life. Everything is going to come to fruition. Everything is going to happen. You know, my mother was telling me one day, Pastor, she said, you, you need patience because, you know, I helped plant a little garden, and I was out there every day uh, looking at it and stuff. So I would go in, and I tell Mama, it's not growing. She says, it's going to take time. I mean, to me, man, let's put it in the ground now. <laughs> we got it, right? But I had to learn over a period of time that growth takes time. And that time is not something we can rush. Time is something we have to learn to live with. And as we live and, and do these things, we know that if time is, is, is that way, change is the same way. So we have to position ourselves for change, you know. Uh, probably two years ago, I was 285 pounds. I was so heavy that when I roll over at night, my stomach, 20, 20 minutes later, would join me on the other side. I was in a mess. And contrary to popular belief, all overweight is not because of what you eat. You can think wrong and not be able to keep your weight down. You can become a person that's grieving, a person that's anything that's going to shock your system to keep it from functioning properly will block digestion and all that, and you will blow up like a balloon. What are you saying? That you have to change your mind about worry. You have to change your mind about fear. You have to change your mind about what and who you let in your life. Because if it's it, it, anything that's abusive, anything that's going to cause you to think less of yourself than you are, will also contribute to your destruction. That's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, so you, gotta, you're, you, you guard your heart. You make sure that it's healthy. You make sure that you're moving in these regions of of, uh, of, of of growing in the grace of God and growing in the strength of God and growing in the love of God. And then it's also important that we understand that the unchanging God will always accompany us through change. He'll watch over us. He'll, he'll, he'll make sure that every decision we make to the good will be executed by his spirit. And it's just an awesome thing. I, I, I'm so convinced that the body of Christ is, 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 is getting ready to experience a 
great, great move of God. And that one of the main things that's going to happen in that is that we're going to see a harvest from the, from the world. We're going to see people come and say, what must I do? What is it that I have to do to come into the kind of experience and have the kind of peace that you have? It's going to be a good day, amen? Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes, did I tell you that? 3-1, did I give you that one yet? There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens. And, and so there's a time for change. There's a, there's a time for doing things different. There's a time. There's a time. So just get to the point where you know what, what time is. What time is it? What, what time is it? See, I can't tell time. I have to know time. I have to know. As, as I know now that it's a certain hour on the clock, I have to know when is it time to seek the Lord? When is it time? to spend more time with the Lord. When is the time we have to be sensitive in these areas? And that will also alert us to when is the transition? When is the time to do something else? When is the time to move over here? When is the time to, to do that so that we can do it? So, and, and I'm not talking about time management here. I'm talking about spirit management <laughs> where, where he's sensitizing us and we're moving uh, with, with him on that. Children of Israel, Israel had the experience that God would say, okay, if it's time to move, then he, his, his way of leading them was through the clouds. That when the cloud would move, they would follow the cloud. See, so God's way of moving us now is the inwardness of the Holy Spirit. We did not receive the Holy Spirit just to speak in another tongue. We received that so that we could be led by the Spirit. And, and, and being led by the Spirit, we will know when it's time, when the time to move, when the time to not move. We will, we will have a constant knowledge of it. I'm putting my belly because uh, that's technically where we, we receive the Spirit of God inwardly, and not necessarily just the belly, but you know, I'm, I'm touching that to, to illustrate. So... Uh, I want to move into something think, that I think is going to be very, very important in, in this. And that is uh, Lamentations chapter 3. But before, go ahead and go there. Chapter 3, verse 21 through 23. But let me say something about one word in that verse. Hope. 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 Now, this, to me, I want you to put this down, think about it, pray about it, but I really believe that hope is the motivator for change. Hope is the motivator for change. No hope, less change. No hope, no reason to change. No hope, no initiative. When you lose your hope, it's almost like losing direction. When you lose your hope, it's like losing just, you know, why? You know, what, what is anything for? Why am I working every day if at the end of the day, you know? Most of us experience this, you know, uh, from the IRS. How much did you make last year? Send it to us. You know, oh, hope. Uh, we, a lot of people didn't like the, the gentleman who said it, but he used to say, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Well, he had a point. It, it's not him. It was what he was saying that we need. So you got, you've got to, don't allow your hope to, to diminish. Don't, don't, don't let it go to the place of, ill repair. Keep, keep your hope. Hope is a motivator. Look, look at your neighbor and say, keep your hope. Come on, tell him. Keep your hope. Keep your hope. You, it, that's, it's hope that's going to cause all the other things to work that's working. You see, 
And so we look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 now. And, and, and again, we keep coming. Every other scripture may be, until I'm finished, about God's unchangingness. His is his not being one who changes. And that's what he says here. 13 eight. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same yesterday, past tense, today, present tense, forever, in the futuristic. He's got every time covered. He is the same. He will not change. So if he's not going to change and we're in him, we won't change. The only way you can change is come out of him through fear, worry, disappointments, all the things that we, we, we've got to deny those things. Don't let them in your life. Don't cause them to, or don't let them cause you to go backwards in your progress, but to continually come forward, continually walk forward, continually to come to that, to that place. And, and it's such a key, such a key. Such a key. So hope, hope again, is the motivator. And then the second point I want to make is aside from the truth, aside from the truth and faith that we gain from God, aside from the truth uh, and faith we, we gain from God and his word, change includes Change includes, but is not limited to, and I'm going to give you four things that will complete that sentence. But let me go over the sentence first. Aside from the truth and faith we gain from God's word, change includes, but, but is not limited to, number one, decision. 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 Govern your life by decisiveness, but be decisive. You, you can't go through life without being decisive. Making decisions. If you see a problem, it, 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 and that was the whole point. Why didn't they tell us this? Why didn't they just tell us in school, we're teaching you math so you can think, so you can learn how. Why didn't they tell us that? Why, why did they just... Tell us that about algebra and, and, and all these other things. It, it, because the world just does things thinking you'll figure it out. But we were taught mathematics. We were taught algebra. We were taught all these other things so that we could learn how to reason. That's what their, the goal of them was for. And Paul, read Paul concerning trials, tests and trials, are the same. they're along the same thing. They're, they're in there with mathematics. You have trials, you have all these things, not because of something you did, but something that you're getting ready to be able to stand against. <laughs> you, so it's, it, it's just they that live godly are going to suffer persecution, and persecution is part of that test and trial. I need some water. I preach my mouth dry. Man. Anybody get anything out of this but me? <laughs> See, and, and, and so, so it, hey, just because you're saved don't mean you don't need logic. Logic helps you understand. Logic just makes sense of things. You follow what I'm saying? It's not like we have another idol if we're logic. If we think, if we think. I mean, in fact, one of the promises God says that he would give us knowledge of witty inventions, but well, witty inventions can't come to people who don't think. There are billionaires because, in fact, what the world does and what happens to them if it happened to one congregation in America that one person would listen to God enough to get a witty invention and become a billionaire, the kingdom of God would catch up with the world. Who guy says, look, people are going to want to eat out. 
I don't want to eat out. Let's start a place and call it McDonald's. Well, the says, hey, people are going to need gasoline. Why don't we just open a gas station? I don't bet, but I guarantee you that there are people in this congregation that had a witty invention and didn't do anything about it. Someone else is a millionaire off of it right now. I'll guarantee you that. Because they come to us first. God gives us knowledge of witty inventions. If you've had one, act on it. If you had one, act on it. So that's the first one, decision. These, the, the, the four things, aside from the truth and faith, we gain from God's word. Change includes, but it's not limited to, decision. Number two, determination. 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 Number three, declaration. Declaration. You have what you say, speaking it out. Speaking it out. And the fourth one, deference. Deference. D-E-F-E-R-E-N-C. It means humility, submission, and respect. Deference. What do you mean? I want to give God glory for the concept that he gave me. I'm going to give God glory for the life that he gave me. I'm going to give God glory for the peace he gives me. I'm going to give God glory. I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to interact with God. He's not just going to be blessing me, but I'm going to bless him. I'm going to bless the Lord. What? With my obedience, with my thankfulness, with my praise, with everything that I am. I'll just give myself back to him. I'll give myself back to him. What a magnificent life, huh? What a way to live in his presence, loving him, talking with him, walking with him. What a joy. What a joy. So let me go over the dynamics we've covered so far. Number one was hope, the dynamic of hope. Number two was those four, those four uh, things that we gave. Decisiveness, determination, declaration, deference. Number three now. And this, this is a positive self-confidence. A positive self-confidence. Again, that's where the enemy tries to come in. The scripture says that we should not think more of ourselves than we are. But the other principle is you should not think less of yourself than you are. So a, pill, a, a poor self-concept is, 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 is a, it's a battle, uh, again, in the mind, in the region area, that is intended to decrease your faith and ability to touch God and to believe him. Okay? It, it, give you an example even of some of these guys in the scriptures. Moses. Moses, man, you should hear Moses as he's talking to God. He's totally saying to God, I'm inadequate. You don't want me. I'm the wrong one. I can't talk. I, can, I can't speak. I don't, have, I don't have a good, you know, communication skills. I don't have this. God says, look, I'm not looking for a, a public speaker. I'm looking for somebody who will represent me to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Can you say that much? <laughs> can, you, can your mouth just say, let my people go? That, that's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. So he said, I can't do it. I can't say it. Well, take Jethro with you and let him be your mouthpiece. What, what does God do? God says, I'm not going to let you off the hook because you'll be off the hook forever. So let me show you how to utilize resources that are next to you to do what I've told you to do. So that's a change for most of us to depend on someone else to help us. I want to illustrate something with you, Pastor. You, I want to use you as an illustration. You be, you be me. 
You're me in this illustration, okay? You're me in the illustration. I'm an elderly man trying to go up the stairs, okay? Okay, and, and you're seeing me, and, and, he, and he's, he just pushed, pushed me away. I wanted so bad to say, well, go ahead and fall. <laughs> but I w it would have been out of order, thank you. You all see, you see what I'm saying? See, when you're becoming 73, 75, 85, you need help sometimes. So the change is in the years, and a lot of time because you look good and because you look strong, you think you're okay. But when you start doing some tasks that before, you know, before you, you did with the ease, and now they're coming, you need some help. He shoved me away. I wanted so bad to tell him, well, go ahead and fall. I've been trained by my parents to help folk. I, I didn't want to see the man on, on, on the thing. You understand? Anyway, I could spend all night on that. Y'all be like, well, we're not going to be here to hear it, but you know what I'm saying. I, 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 if you need help, get help. Change. If you're, in other words, if you're so independent that you can't be honest about needing some help, then you need to change. From time to time, we all need a little help. Amen? We all need a little help. Wow. Wow. Now, now as, we, as we get down to the close, I, 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 want, I want to really make sure that you, that you have the dynamics here, okay? In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21, we're going to go through verse 23, 21 through 23, 21 through 23. Yet this I call to mind, therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Why aren't we consumed? Because of God's great love. Because of God's great love, we're not consumed. For his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. They are new Every morning, his, his compassions are new every morning. That's change. He never changes, but what he does is new every morning. Not the same old, not the same thing, not the same way. They're new. Say new. Okay. Did I tell y'all this before? Did I look for the definition of new? Did I tell y'all? Oh, man, I'm looking for the definition of new. I get this big dictionary. Oh, big dictionary. Open it up. New. And guess what the definition was? Not old. <laughs> oh, God. Man, I was so, I was, because you know, you want to give the best impression. I want to come out with a word like, Tashuma uh, Kumu. That's, that's the Greek word for change. Man, it just said, not all. You're not going to, I guess the dictionary said, you're not going to use me to act a fool. <laughs> I'm going to give you my definition that I have. Not all. Not all. Can I spend a few minutes with those of you who are hard on yourself and beat yourself up? That's just kind of desecrating your entire life with a poor self concept. Concept. Change. 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 You want an opinion of who you are? Go to God. Go to God. He has a love for you and wants to deposit that in you so that you come to Him confidently. And that you live this life confidently. That you do whatever you have to do confidently. Because he 
greater is he that is in me, in me, than he that is in the world. And we're going to close with these next few statements. Have you gotten anything out of this yet? Say it, change. Change. Okay, I got the word. Of, uh, the fourth thing that I want to say here is that we have to come to a place where we're assured of God's presence with us. He has said multiple times, I'll not leave you, I'll not leave you, I'll not leave you. But if you don't believe he's there, then him leaving is not an issue. <laughs> and so we have to come to this place that we're not, on, we're not alone. We're not by ourselves. He is with us. He is with us. We do not see him. We cannot feel him tangibly, but we can know that he is in us and he is with us. Amen. Never to fail us, never to leave us, but to always be there for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We have this opportunity to talk about you, your love for us. Have an opportunity to review the fact that though we're called on to change, that that change is always going to be upward. It's not going to be backwards, sideward. It's going to come up. It's going to come up to a standard, up to a knowledge, up to a love, up to an expectation that you have for us. And we thank you for that. We're going to, we're going to examine ourselves. We're going to go through and see what it is that about me that I'm not allowing. What it is, what is it that I'm allowing that's not good, not allowing that's, that's bad. And I want to make those corrections. I want to come to that place. And or today, I have not made a decision to let you be my Lord, let you into my life. And as pastor comes, I'm going to really listen to the invitation today. And I've not responded before, but today I sense that I need to come forward and say, you can come into my life. You can be my Lord. You can be my Savior. And I give you the praise for that. And I thank you in Jesus' name. The gentlemen here are going to help me take an offering for the back and get those plates. We're going to take up an offering for Dr. Johnson. If you've already given, and that's fine. That's fine. If you don't have it and, and you're not prepared to give for Dr. Johnson, that's fine. We just want to give you an opportunity to give in his ministry to support him as we send him back to California. Um, has anyone got anything today? Me too. Me too. Me too. Me too. I think, I the, think church the church is ready for change. I think I think they're ready, ready to come forward, gentlemen. gentlemen. Go ahead, go ahead, come forward, forward, gentlemen. Father, as we take up this offering, this offering we pray, Lord, pray, Lord, Lord, Lord bless in Jesus' name. name. We pray that we pray you bless, bless. Both ways, both ways that's because that's, that is that is your kingdom, kingdom concept. That's a principle of all of you teaching your word. That you are blessed, bless the one who gives, gives, and you bless, and you bless the, one the one who receives. And for those of us who give, we need to give it cheerful, cheerful. We need to do it, do it, faith, faith. We need to do it, do it, believing, believing trust, and trusting. Because if we don't, we don't have the right attitude. And if we don't, we don't do it for your kingdom. Your kingdom. We're not doing it right. It might be blessed. So we just ask you, Father, to check the charts. In Jesus' name. That we give what you call us to give, and that we trust the faith that we're giving, we're giving into your into kingdom, your kingdom Father. Father. Bless, bless those that those sow, sow, and bless the seeds. In Jesus' name, Jesus we, pray. Name we pray. Amen. 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 There's a lot of people here who need to get a better concept. Uh, I've been gaining, I've been gaining myself that our mission as a church is to pray with you. We pray about you, as Pastor Dwayne says all the time. We hold you in our hearts and we lift you up. But some people need to take someone's hand and they need to pray together. 
And if you've heard something today or the last several days that's added up in your heart and you want someone to pray with you, we want you to come forward. We want you to come up here and pray with us. If you're done, you're dismissed. If you need to go, you're welcome to go. We're going to play music and we're going to pray with people. And you're welcome to leave. But if you need someone to pray with you, please come forward. Please come up here so we can pray with you. Amen. We love you all. You have a blessed week. Thank you for coming. And please study these messages and think about God's grace and embrace change because constant change is here to stay. Amen. We love you.